Thank you. This is a, um, a large study, uh, 1,096 patients, phase three trial of first-line therapy with nivolumab plus ipilimumab versus sunitinib in patients with advanced renal cell carcinoma. So this was a global international study, and uh, the uh, primary patient population was patients with intermediate risk and poor risk. And the uh, primary co uh, the co-primary endpoints were overall survival, progression-free survival, and objective response rate in this patient population. And this uh, 42 months minimum follow-up, or median of 49 months follow-up, showed that uh, the nivolumab plus apilumab treatment arm was superior to sunitinib in that patient population of intermediate risk poor risk with OS and ORR. And with a uh, minimum of 42 months, the uh, OS for that population, the median was 47 months and it was 26.6 uh, months for the sunitinib arm. And now when you look at the uh, progression-free survival for that patient population with intermediate risk, poor risk, there is a plateau beyond 30 months and continuing through 42 months and beyond at 35%, which means that 35% of patients have not had progression or progression-free, and there is a plateau there. Whereas the sunitinib treatment arm was the patients had relapses. So I think this is very uh, important data in that Patients treated with nivolumab and ipilimumab appear to have more than a third of them have a, a are progression free for four month, four years and beyond. The other important uh, aspect of the study is the complete response rate, which in the intermediate and poor risk population, as well as the intent to treat, which is all the patients treated in the trial, and a cohort of favorable risk patients, which was an exploratory cohort. The CR rate was greater than 10% in all these three risk groups. In the cohort of intermediate and poor risk, the complete response rate was 10.1 months, 10.1% versus 1% with sunitinib. For the intent to treat population, the complete response rate was 11% versus 2% with sunitinib. In the favorable risk, although the objective response rate and PFS were higher or better with sunitinib, yet the complete response rate was 13% with nivolumab, epilumab versus 6% with um, uh, sunitinib. Importantly, in the study, there were 59 patients who achieved a complete response. And 47% of those, 59 patients, so about half of those who achieved a complete response with nivolumab and epilumab, did not require subsequent systemic therapy. And I think that's important. So the key messages from this later follow-up, which is this trial, Checkpoint 1-4, is the only study in first line, a, a phase three study that has given now two follow-up results at 30 months and now at 42 months minimum follow-up from the initial presentation or primary analysis, which was in September 2017. So there is no other phase three trial that has given us longer follow-up beyond median follow-up of 12 months for these other studies that combined a PD-1 or a PD-L1 plus a TKI. So I think the important thing also from, that, uh, from those results is that there are patients who can achieve a complete response and can stop therapy. And hence, this concept of treatment-free survival or treatment-free interval, which in some patients is many years where patients did not require any further systemic therapy after stopping uh, this therapy. Additionally, those patients, and there were around a quarter of them, who discontinued therapy with nivolumab plus epilumab because of toxicity, 25.6%, those patients had at least as good, if not better, survival than overall the intent to treat patients treated with nivolumab epilumab. There was 141 patients who discontinued therapy, and the denominator for those, so all patients who received nivo epi, was 550 patients. So 141 out of the 550, their survival was at least as good as all of them. So indicating that even if patients discontinue therapy because of toxicity, their survival is, can still be good. And we have known that patients who develop toxicity due to the immune-related adverse events 
actually that could be a predictor of benefit. So I think the, me the key messages from the study is a higher than 10% CR rate across all risk groups, a sustained or maintained superiority of OS for the intermediate risk and intent to treat. For the favorable, the CR rate is more than double, although the OS between the two treatment arms for sunitinib and nivolumab for the favorable is inconclusive. Okay, time will tell. The curves for OS and PFS are coming together for that favorable risk with over time. So I think the other important thing is that we did not see any with longer follow-up now, four years, as you mentioned, we have not seen any new uh, signals uh, regarding safety. As was pre previously published, eight patients uh, died as a result of therapy in the nivo EP arm versus four patients who died of uh, toxicity for the sunitinib arm. So that corresponds to 1.5% in the nivo EP arm and 0.9% in the sunitinib arm.